Hello there, we are looking today at seven portable sharpening systems. These are ones designed to go, as per the press of the uh, the makers, in your pocket and carry with you when you go on your more prolonged knife adventures that are going to dull your blades and need restoration before you get back home. So let's look at the seven that I've got on the table. All right, so we've got an easy lap hone and stone. So very simple little device here. Plastic handle with a, I believe, 700 grit fine diamond plate on the end. You can buy these in different grits. Um, very basic tool. Costs about $16 from your hardware store. Next one is the WorkSharp Pocket Field Sharpener. So this one has uh, two surfaces on it and guides. So you can rest your knife from here and then use that to steer your blade across. I'll demonstrate all of these in use, restoring a dull knife to a sharp knife. So don't worry about that. And then you've got a ceramic rod for finishing off there. It's the larger of it's the largest of all of them and the boxiest of all of them. Next up is Victorinox's entry. This little pen style ceramic rod sharpener here. Um, knife dust on it there. Um, this one I'm going to use a bit like a sharp maker. So just angling it like this and cutting downwards through it like that. And on, under the cap there it has a ceramic honing pull through. So pull throughs you have to be very careful of if they're made of carbide, but ceramic ones are generally for just realigning an edge and deburring and good things like that. So these cost you about 25 bucks. Oh, and these are about $35 as well. So that's that one here. The Benchmade is the most expensive. This is a WorkSharp Benchmade collaboration. These are about $70. Very Benchmade in its aesthetic. Has a Benchmade pocket clip, has the pivot collar thing there going on. This one is a strop and a a guided ceramic rod. So interested to see how this one goes for your um, actual restorations. Um, I have a feeling this might be more for honing, but we'll see if it can restore an edge from dull. And then we've got a Falkneven DC3. So this is the one that comes with a lot of Falkneven knives. A uh, little uh, diamond plate and then ceramic stone for stock removal and then honing. And then you can use, of course, the case as a leather strop or just my pants leg is generally what happens. Quite small otherwise, but there you go. And then we've got the smallest one here. This is the micro little workshop. Um, I can't remember what it's called. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, this one's got two sharpening systems or surfaces. So a diamond surface here, ceramic surface here. And then you've got um, a little bit kit inside, which is cool. So you want to take off your pocket clip or something, pull the bit out, put it in this magnetic driver here, and you can then use it to service your knife, which is pretty cool as well. So these ones, are about $13, so the cheapest of all of them, these. Um, quite a cool little thing. And then we've got the Falcon Even Automatic, um, what is it, FS3 sharpening stone. So ceramic, diamond, diamond for like stock removal, blade repair, ceramic for honing. Um, it has a lock so you don't accidentally, um, so if you lock it down and you push the button, it won't accidentally spring open. So you release the lock, push the button, and you've got a very cool automatic uh, knife sharpener there. Very similar to sort of the surfaces of the DC3. So what I'm going to do with all of these is get this Buck 110. This is 58 Rockwell 420HC steel. I'm going to remove the edge on it using this stone here. Three passes will make it a relatively inert edge that will struggle to cut through paper. So I'm going to do that and restore it with every single one of these sharpeners and give you my thoughts. So it should be a cool video. Let's get into it, starting with the Easy Lap. Alrighty, so the Easy Lap is going to be as simple as for, for this knife, I'm going to be holding the Easy Lap steady and just doing my edge along it to so bring my edge back. This is also versatile in that you can use it, say, on a larger tool. Given that it's got such a generous handle, you can bring the tool to the edge as well and say an axe or something like that. This one's actually had a lot of use for me sharpening my axes in the field. So all I'm going to be doing is, as best as I can, trying to slice off the surface of it. Um, and this is going to be redoing the micro bevel on the knife.
Alright, so that one's definitely improved the edge back to being a paper slicing edge. It's a little bit rough and you can definitely see I've worked it down to a proper micro bevel again on the end of that 17 degree per side edge that I had. But a quick easy resharpening to get a knife to bite once again, which is basically what you're going to want if you're out in the field. As I always say, you've got time when you get home to put your mirror polished edges back on. These are things to just keep it going when you're taking your knives out for an extended duration. So the easy lap here, applying my little um, matrix to it. In terms of pocketability, it's a little bit long to have in your pants pocket every day. It's very thin, so it's not the worst, but um, I think just the length of it, it's gonna probably protrude in most pockets. Um, that being said, it would go really well in a sheath pocket or something like that, but I'm gonna give it a three out of five for pocketability. Its capability is good. It's gonna get a good working edge back on a knife, um, providing you can keep a steady hand. I'm going to give it a 3 out of 5 for capability as well because it doesn't really go any further than putting that edge back on. It doesn't really have any honing features built in or really any other features at all to it. It's very, very simple and rudimentary. It is, however, excellent value. I'm going to give it a 5 out of 5 on the value scale. Uh, you can get these for really cheap from hardware stores and they're not hard to find, at least this is in Australia. Um, and you can get them in different grits as well. You could actually have a mini system going on. You could probably buy a couple of them, put them together on a split ring and have a relatively complete portable sharpening system if you wished. But just carrying one like this, I think it's a great place to start for a very cheap, very attainable. All right, so this next one here, we'll put that, we'll get, get our nice edge back off the knife there. Make sure it doesn't cut paper. So the edge is back to being quite rough. I'm going to show you how to use this WorkSharp little pocket sharpening device here. So WorkSharp have given you angles. So you can see here, I can rest the knife on the edge of this plastic here. And if I try and keep that as it was, I get WorkSharp's recommended angle. Like that. So it's not the easiest thing in the world to use. Um, this diamond side does feel quite rough and fairly capable of removing. It's very, very short though. As you can see, you run out of blade, so you run out of sharpener pretty quickly on a longer blade, so you just kind of have to stage it a little bit. Anyway, let's give it an edge back using this little gizmo here. Alrighty, so there is now a nice um, uh, paper slicing edge again on the Buck 110 from this one here. So the most notable thing here is you get such a small area of stone and you're going to be doing some readjusting. Uh, again, that was pretty, um, pr I guess probably pretty difficult to do compared to even the easy lap was probably a little bit more, um, just due to the size of it requires less time because you've got more surface removing more material so probably a little bit more challenging to use however i wouldn't say it's hard just um, out of the seven of them it's probably one of the more fiddly ones to go with um, in terms of my little criteria i'm using in terms of pocketability it's very small uh, it's a bit of it's a square shape which is a bit more of an odd shape to carry with you um, so i'll probably give this one a, a, a three out of five as well for pocketability in terms of its capabilities uh, I'm probably going to go and stick with about three out of five. Although it has a sharpening, uh, sorry, a honing rod there at the ceramic, uh, just the size of it makes it a little bit less capable for doing something a little bit bigger. Even this Buck 110 required a little bit of maneuvering. So, say the Easy Lab, you could bring, you can bring this to a fixed blade quite effectively, whereas this one is a little bit more difficult to do. Increasing the capability, though, of course, is these Torx drivers here. However, they're not really uh, relevant to the sharpening aspect of it at all, but it's a cool little feature to have nonetheless. These are excellent value. I'm going to give this a 5 out of 5 for value. This was $13 in Australia. Comes with good, like, de decent little Torx bits, little great blade maintenance tool, um, good little stocking stuffer at Christmas time. Really, really cool. Overall, I quite like it. All right, 
out. So the Benchmade, this is the most expensive one, mainly just because it's got Benchmade's brand on it, I would say. It's still made by Workshop. It actually feels a little bit less quality than it sort of looks. It's quite um, light and plasticky feeling, but I guess lightweight is fine. It's got a Benchmade deep carry pocket clip on it, so um, you can carry it for super quick access for those real urgent sharpening emergencies, but uh, it's a pretty good looking little tool, I suppose. So looking at it here, I can already tell you're starting, the most severe abrasive it has is the ceramic rod. So to actually put an edge back on this is probably gonna take a little bit more time, but I would assume with the addition of the leather strop there, um, that might pay some dividends in terms of um, uh, honing a really nice, fine slicing edge. Uh, what I'm also gonna do is I'm gonna put some stropping paste on this um, on this strop there and see if that helps it a little bit as well. Just a slight blob of Tormex honing compound, I think along there, um, should do the trick and make it just a little bit more positive in, um, in terms of even still doing a little bit of steel removal. So um, let that dry in a little bit and um, we'll uh, take our edge off the knife. Pretty happy that that's a pretty rubbish edge. Righto, so this one here um, lies nice and flat on a bench and you just line it up on the workshop guides once again. They've put guides on there for you again. You can also hold it like in a bit of a pistol grip as well. So I'm gonna try it this way first and see how that feels. So that's brought the edge back really nicely already. That's actually a little bit more of a rougher, chalkier feeling um, ceramic rod. So maybe not the worst thing in the world. Um, not too bad at removal. This is a 58 Rockwell 420HC um, back though. So um, that may be doing it some favors as well. But let's really tidy up the edge using this strop here. I always just freehand my stropping. I am not too uh, bothered, I always find to get a decent result. And you see me using these things, I'm not being ultra precise. I'm just trying to go with the guides as best as they kind of feel. But as you can see, I'm definitely getting those edges back, so. Restored paper slicing edge. Um, the uh, combination of the strop and the, uh, the ceramic stone. Um, yeah, seems to do a really good job. So pretty happy with how that one goes. So back to the criteria in terms of pocketability, very pocketable. Um, I'd probably put this at a, this is a five out of five in terms of being pocketable. It's very thin, it's a bit like pen sized and shaped. It's very lightweight. Uh, the pocket clip's pretty good. It's a little bit of a tight pocket clip, but that'll you know adjust uh, over time if you do carry it in your pocket. I haven't honestly carried it in my pocket at all. Like I don't really have a need for carrying one of these so far. Usually this just rides in a kit or in a bag, but these sorts of things uh, if I do go out somewhere. But it is very pocketable. Capability, I'm gonna put it a four out of five. I was originally gonna, I was assuming it was gonna be a little bit lower, but that feeling that edge there, um, at least on a softer steel, like on a more basic steel, like anything from this to your powdered steels, I think you're gonna have a pretty quick job of getting most edges back. Powder steels, as with everything, don't do anything differently, just do it all for longer. So that's what you're after there. And the strop was really nice. It really did bring back the um, the, the proper like fine sort of uh, apex of the of the steel, which was quite nice. Um, a little bit of compound on it, whatever you've got around the place. Uh, pretty good. So pretty happy with this one. I'd say it's very capable. I put this capability at four out of five. Uh, value wise, this is very expensive. Uh, it's too too expensive. It's only because it's got Benchmade's name on it. It's about twice the price of this one here, which is about as much bulk and material. So uh, I'm just going to give this a two out of five in terms of its value. So. But overall, it seems like a pretty good one. Alrighty, next up is the fanciest one, or the flashiest one, uh, the Falcon even. Little automatic 
um, double sided whetstone here. So uh, kind of a bit of a mix between if you got this um, and mixed it with this, I guess, but then with a folding handle. So pretty cool little concept. Um, this is for shaping and this is for honing. Very, very smooth ceramic there. Very smooth, glassy almost. And that feels about, probably about uh, twice the grid of this. So I'm just say it feels like about 600. This feels like it's about 400 or so. So let's dull the buck. Whoops. Get that nice bench made edge off it again. Yep, it's pretty rad, pretty ratty edge. And the way this one works, you just hold it in your hand and you bring the knife to it once again and just the, the angle is probably going to be if you just rest the knife with its spine kind of touching the handle there and then just push off from there, that's probably going to do you a decent enough angle just for field sharpening. And remember guys, for field sharpening, it's just about getting it nice again. Low angle, high angle actually, let's uh, make it a bit of a lower angle. Let's just get it a bit of a, a bit honed in. Remove the ragginess from it. Cool, so the uh, paper slicing edge is back thanks to the uh, Victorinox uh, folding pocket stone here. Um, now, in terms of pocketability, it's quite nice in the pocket. It feels like a little um, little pocket knife itself. It could sit down the bottom of your pocket. It's quite small. Uh, it gives a four out of five for pocketability. Uh, in terms of its capabilities, um, yeah, it seems to be able to get a pretty decent edge on it. Uh, the ceramics and the diamond feel about right to do most sharpening jobs. Uh, you could probably use it quite happily against some harder steels as well. Uh, Falk and Evans diamond plates are usually pretty good. And then uh, in terms of its value, um, yeah, it's, I think it's fairly, quite fairly priced. I'll give this one about a 4 out of 5 in terms of its value as well. Uh, one thing is that it's not got the best lock up in the world. So I'm not sure if I particularly like it as much as the numbers I'm giving it might indicate. I quite I don't you can sort of, you can lock it so you can't push the button, but it's still got jiggle, um, and I'm not sure if I like that bringing, especially if I was bringing it to a larger tool in terms of its um you know la larger tool capabilities. But uh, it still feels like it's a pretty effective abrasive for doing on the fly um, sharpening. So pretty happy with it. All right, so the next one is the Victorinox. Uh, I'm going to use, I will use the ceramics, the, the pull through sort of um, honing tool, uh, but I'll be mainly focusing on the, um, the ceramic diamond rod there. So we'll get the edge nice and dull once again, nice and dull. Nice crappy edge on there again. Let's uh, see how we go. I'm gonna I'm gonna use this a bit like a sharp maker, I reckon, like a spiker sharp maker. I'm gonna hold it up like this, and I'm gonna slice downwards using the knife. I think this is a good way to use this sharpener. So the knife is basically directly 90 degree vertical angle down, and my angle I'm controlling by tilting the sharpener. So that's how I'm gonna use this one.
next leg. See how we're looking. So it's back to slicing paper. I'm going to try this little ceramic bit here though and see if that does any good realigning everything and making it a little bit better even. A little bit of a pull through, okay. Don't like that sound. <laughs> that should just get any sort of bearing and roughness off the edge. Oh yeah, it actually did. Feels much better again. Well there you go, that one Gotta say, pretty happy with that. Um, that's done really well. So in terms of pocketability, five out of five. You've got a pen style clip and everything. It'll fit basically any way you need it to fit. Um, and it's a bit less sort of square and boxy and jagged uh, versus the Easy Lap. It's quite a nice little sleek package. Um, and in terms of its capabilities, pretty decent. The ceramic rod seemed to bite well enough. Probably nothing you're going to want to use against anything made of Maximet or uh, anything super hard, but again, you just do more of it and it will probably do it eventually. Um, that being said, I, I really like it's you know quite intuitive. You just sort of angle it yourself, put it against the surface. You could you could hold this and do it like that as well. That's no problems. But um, yeah, I found that quite intuitive to use. And the ceramic guide uh, on the in there did actually feel like it did a pretty okay job at bringing the edge back. So we give their capabilities four out of five on this one as well. Really, really nicely done. Um, and in terms of its value, it's twenty four ninety five. That's for how much I paid for it. So I'd say that's really good value. So five out of five on the value. Good job, Victoria. It's, it's about the same price as like a, a classic Swiss Army knife or something like that. So really happy with that one. Pretty good. Might even be my favorite so far. How strange. All right, so the workshop pocket field sharpener, I believe it's called, is the next one I'm gonna do. So this feels like the most substantial, the closest thing to like a, perhaps a home stone kit or something similar. Um, quite robust, um, quite large, the largest out of all of them by far. These two grips on the end, you're looking at diamond plate and then ceramic stone. So let's um, dull the knife and see how this one goes. Show the knife is dull. Pretty crappy edge. Um, so we're going to be using the guides as best we can, but otherwise just seeing what we can do uh, with this uh, you know, little gadget here. Uh, the workshop sort of uh, field, pocket field sharpener um, that's done a pretty good job at bringing that edge back um, I would love to see this with a leather strop maybe even on the side or something would be really cool even just a small leather square would probably do the trick although as you see just the leg of your pants will get most um, most real um, obstructive crap off the edge of the blade um, as long as you pull it tight and you've got decent quality sort of thicker denim or whatever on probably do the, an okay enough job so uh, that one's really cool, definitely feels like probably the most substantial and versatile so far that I've tested. Something that's made basically an all-in-one kit, so um, pocketability, it's too big to carry in your pocket, one out of five for pocketability, it's just a big square boxy thing. Um, I think they still do call it a pocket sharpener though, so that's why I'm bringing it in with these guys. Capabilities, five out of five, I think this is 
highly capable. Um, you could probably even do some slightly bigger jobs on this. If you have nothing to sharpen with at all, if you want to start with this, um, you know, it's always easier the bigger you go. So this might be the best one to start with. Um, as in like thinking of what this one does, you've got so much more space to play with. So yeah, really happy with that. In terms of value, these are great value. I think these are about $36 or something like that in Australia. So um, yeah, can't fault the price at all. It's got nice guides in it, feels well constructed. Pretty, pretty positive on this one too. Alrighty, and lastly is the Falcon even DC3. These will set you back about 30 bucks, but if you're someone like me who just buys Falcon even knives, you're gonna have heaps of these, because often when you get anything sort of more of a premium Falcon even, you'll um you'll get a DC3 thrown in for good measure. So um, these are pretty well tried and, and proven and they are you know pretty no pretty well known to be of relatively decent quality. I use these a bit like this. Um, so if I've got a desk candy, I'll use it a bit like the sharp maker. So I'll just be bringing the knife down against it like that. You can also, of course, um, hold it in hand and do it like this as well. <laughs> Be clumsy this way. For me anyway. Watch your fingers there. Try and keep them lower than the stone. Okay, on your pant leg. See how we're travelling. Definitely brought the edge back. Let's just hone a little bit on the ceramic side. I think I prefer doing it like this. Cool, so the DC3 has brought back a good paper slicing edge to the knife as well. Now this is basically the reason why things like this are the reason why things like this kind of get made because this has a bit of a learning curve to it. It's basically just a little flat block. So you gotta be conscious where your fingers are, you gotta be conscious of how you're handling it, keep a few things steadier. Definitely possible, took about the same amount of time but it just required a bit more concentration. So definitely not, probably the hardest to use of all of them. Probably the, the ones with less assistance are obviously gonna be harder to use but still usable. Um, in terms of its capabilities though, this is very capable. This is able to be brought to a tool, so I can sharpen my axe, and I have done, and I've even sharpened my falcon even, if you watch back and see my um, A1, I think S1 videos, um, you, I bring my falcon even edges back with these all the time, like not a problem at all. Um, you just bring the knife to the blade. So here we go, falcon even uh, A1 Pro. You just hold your blade in one hand and you can just bring this diamond stone down and that literally does enough in the field to keep your edge alive. So, and that's all you're wanting to do in the field. You do fancy stuff with it when you get home, but in the field it's just all about keeping it is nice and workable. Rub it on the old pant leg. Whoop, 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 whoop. I don't know how sharp this was before I did that, but it's, you know, it's great. It's fine. Capable tool. Um, pocketable? Yeah, absolutely. It comes with a little, um, little leather case there, which you can use if you don't use your pant leg. You can put your little leather case. Uh, where you put the knife 
Um, so the block backing leather case, put it on a flat surface and you can use the fuzzy side of the leather case as a strop. So pretty capable as well. Capability wise, I'm gonna give this four out of five. Just doesn't have the ease of use to make it to for everyone, I would argue, but it's great. Uh, and pocketability, four out of five as well. It's a little slip in a pocket. You barely even notice it, it's fine. Um, it feels, being in this, it feels a little bit less like a big old box than this one did, so really cool. So that's what I've got for you today, guys. Hope you've enjoyed. I uh, look, out of all of them, I think my favorites are possibly these two. I really like the little Victorinox one. It's such a sleek little inexpensive package and this workshop does a really good job of feeling a bit more substantial. That being said, it's not super pocketable. The Benchmade was really good for bringing back probably the best edge you can get due to the, uh, the strop. So you can probably get your knives almost to the point where you probably wouldn't need to do anything with them at home using this. You could probably keep your knives pretty happy with this one here. You might just need to use it a little bit more because it doesn't really have any proper severe abrasives for like large scale removal. So there's that one too. Um, this one I was a little bit less happy with. It's cool that it's automatic and stuff. Just feels a little bit rickety and to be honest, um, I think I'd just go with the DC4 over this one. Uh, the handle does make it a little bit better to, I guess, bring to things, but then the jiggliness isn't the most um, inspiring thing to, to, to bring to a really, really sharp edge. So a bit, bit lukewarm on this one, to be honest. Still not a bad tool. Pretty cool, but pretty cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, that one there. Uh, this one is just so small that um, while it's, I guess, better than nothing, it's just quite difficult to use. Uh, just so tiny having those abrasive surfaces there, but a really cool little idea and again like a great gadget better than nothing You know absolutely better than nothing you could bring this to a tool like you could you could I know It's a bit weird, but you could go along your edges like that it would be relatively safe and fine to use You'll have absolutely no real like much less control over your angles and stuff like that tool and then the trusty old easy lap uh, not a problem at all with that one. Um, it's probably the most basic. It, I probably wouldn't choose this out of all the other ones, but nothing to snort at if this is what you've got. Fits basically in anything, like it would fit in any of your sheath pouches and in your backpacks, it weighs nothing. Really, really simple little tool, uh, really good. Just lacks the versatility of having like different grits and guides and leather or ceramic or anything on it. So most rudimentary one, still nothing to, to, still nothing to laugh at, but um, I'd probably take yeah, probably these two. And this one's nice if it wasn't so darn expensive. So that's my thoughts. Hope you've enjoyed. I'll see you in the next one, guys. Goodbye.